If you've ever talked about NFTs for more than 10 seconds, you've almost certainly encountered a number of comments about the environmental impacts of NFTs. You're harming the environment. You don't care about the environment at all. You're destroying the earth. And if you've ever spent any time on the internet, you've likely heard NFTs referred to as an ecological nightmare pyramid scheme and a gleeful wastefulness that is a crime against humanity. But are NFTs actually that bad? And if you decide to sell an NFT, are you contributing to massive environmental damage? I'm April and Alter, and in this video, I'll present the environmental considerations of NFTs in a hopefully relatively unbiased manner. We'll take a deep dive into NFTs and the environment so that you can better understand and make better decisions about your actions with NFTs. First, we'll explore the main claims for why NFTs are bad for the environment. Next, we'll examine what the Web3 community is doing about it to make it better. And finally, we'll wrap up with my own personal opinions about the matter for whatever that's worth. That's a lot of material to cover, so let's jump into it. First, let's tackle the beefy stuff. What are the main claims for why NFTs are bad for the environment? Ultimately, it boils down to two metrics, electricity consumption and carbon emissions. According to the Ethereum Energy Consumption Index, Ethereum's energy consumption is currently at an all-time high, using around 106.12 terawatt hours per year. To put that in perspective, that's comparable to the annual power consumption of the entire country of Kazakhstan. And looking at Ethereum's carbon footprint, we can see that Ethereum is currently churning out 50.41 mega tons of carbon dioxide per year. That's comparable to the carbon footprint of all of Hungary. And if that doesn't seem scary enough, most media companies like to break down these metrics on a per transaction basis. The claim here is that a single Ethereum transaction will use 239.4 kilowatt hours, or enough to power an average US household for eight days. A single Ethereum transaction also expends almost 114 kilograms of carbon dioxide, or about the equivalent as watching 19,000 hours of of YouTube. After hearing these metrics, it's pretty easy to see where a lot of that environmental backlash and fear around NFTs is coming from. A sale of a single NFT uses enough energy to power home for eight days and emits enough carbon dioxide for watching 19,000 hours of YouTube. Now imagine a 10,000 item collection. The environmental impact starts to add up. How can you justify such an environmental cost? It's an important question to ask. Let's see how the Web3 community responds. But first, I want to point out a pretty major flaw with some of the aforementioned claims. Ethereum's energy consumption does not rise proportionally to the number of transactions. This is because Ethereum's energy footprint is linked to block production, not transaction processing. Think of it like this. An Ethereum block is like an airplane and transactions are its passengers. An airplane's carbon emissions are dictated by its numbers of flights, not its number of passengers. It doesn't matter if the airplane is flying at full capacity at 500 passengers or at half capacity at 250 passengers. A flight is a flight and the airplane's carbon emissions overall are roughly the same. The same can be said for blocks of Ethereum. Ethereum's energy usage is determined by block minting, which is based on time. Each block on Ethereum is minted at a set rate of 12 to 14 minutes per block. It doesn't matter if this block carries one transaction or 10,000 transactions, the energy used is the same. That's not to say that if you submit a transaction such as selling, buying, or minting an NFT, you're not responsible at all for Ethereum's energy usage. Individual behavior becomes a larger problem when it drives trends. If we go back to the airplane example, it doesn't really matter if you as an individual buy your plane ticket. The plane would take off with an empty seat regardless with the same environmental impact. But if enough people decide to fly who weren't planning on it before, the airline may decide to add more flights themselves, which does lead to an increase in emissions. An overall increase in NFT sellers and buyers leads to more NFT hype. This brings more people into the Ethereum network, which in turn influences more people to buy into Ethereum, which then leads to network congestion and increased Ethereum price. The higher the value of Ethereum, the more incentive miners have to cash in. Since the right to mine a block of Ethereum requires solving a very complex computational puzzle, miners can increase their odds of success by investing in more powerful hardware. These incentives cause an arms race with miners acquiring increasingly power hungry mining equipment, leading to more car emissions and more energy usage of Ethereum as a whole. So the environmental impact of NFTs is not as simple as with every NFT you create, you use enough energy to power a house for eight days and use enough carbon dioxide to watch 19,000 hours of YouTube. But it's clear to see that the energy usage and carbon emissions of Ethereum network as a whole is a pretty substantial problem. And believe it or not, the high energy and carbon output is actually by design. Ethereum currently runs on a consensus mechanism 
mechanism known as proof of work. To be eligible to add or mine a new block onto the Ethereum blockchain, miners must solve an arbitrary complex computational puzzle faster than any other miner. The ability for any miner in the world to add new blocks while retaining the overall security of the network only works if there is a cost associated with mining and unpredictability about who will win the block race. To successfully defraud the Ethereum blockchain, a nefarious miner would have to consistently win this proof of work race, which is both very unlikely due to the built-in unpredictability and very costly due to the energy expenditures. So the Ethereum network is energy inefficient by design with the intent to make it more secure. But while this proof of work system may work at a smaller scale, it has devastating environmental impacts at a larger scale. The Web3 community is keenly aware of this environmental impact and is working hard on finding other solutions. The Ethereum network itself has an entire page dedicated to transparency around its energy consumption. And while it currently operates on the energy inefficient proof of work consensus mechanism, this may change soon. A greener future for Ethereum is already being built in the form of a proof of stake chain. In this alternate consensus mechanism, this arbitrary puzzle solving is unnecessary. Instead, validators stake or offer some of their crypto as collateral against dishonest behavior. If the validator misbehaves in the form of bad behavior or dishonest validation, their staked crypto is slashed or taken away from them. This mechanism strongly incentivizes active and honest participation in securing the network, while at the same time not requiring computers from around the world to crank away at solving arbitrary puzzles. So to remain secure, instead of an unpredictable and costly race, like in the case of proof of work, proof of stake offers the threat of lost assets. After its transition from proof of work to proof of stake, Ethereum will use at least 99.95% less energy as it did before, effectively removing all of the associated environmental concerns. But as many others have brought up time and time again, this transition to proof of stake has been promised for quite some time. The Ethereum network currently claims that the transition should happen around Q2 of 2022, but this estimate has been pushed back many times. There's no real guarantee when and if Ethereum will make the jump, but Ethereum's own network is not the only solution when it comes to the NFT environment problem. In the meantime, other solutions are taking root. While Ethereum still currently operates on the proof of work system, competitors like Solana, who already operate on the proof of stake system, are rising up. Already, Solana is gaining popularity in the NFT world for its negligible gas fees, lightning quick transactions, and of course, lighter environmental impact. Other projects, such as a self-sustainable system in the oil drilling capital of Alberta, Canada, are also taking the stage. Developed by a company called Currency Works, this system turns oil waste into environmentally friendly energy that powers crypto mining. Some companies are even selective about about the physical locations they mine in, seeking out places that use renewable sources or excess energy. Currently, around 39% of Bitcoin mining can be linked to renewable sources. And finally, there are innovative side chains in place to move transactions off chain. A company called Starkware recently closed a $50 million Series C funding round for an approach that reduces the carbon footprint of Ethereum by cramming more and more information into each block of the blockchain. Going back to the airplane example, the fixed cost of a flight is quite large. But if instead of fitting 500 people on airplane, you can now fit 800,000 people on the airplane, the carbon footprint per person is actually quite, quite decent. That's exactly the solution Starkware proposes, and it can currently fit over a million NFTs in a single Ethereum block. Ethereum also has its own popularly used sidechain called Polygon that also helps move transactions off of the main blockchain. So those are some of the proposed and current solutions for the NFT environmental problem. And as for my own personal opinion, for whatever that's worth, I'm not concerned. Media companies love bashing on the NFT and crypto communities, and they use sensationalized environmental claims as weapons. There is definitely an environmental impact of NFTs, and it's something that people should definitely be conscious of. But you're not going to completely destroy the earth by creating your NFT collection. Let's potentially not cancel innovative, groundbreaking technology based on its first generation of use. When cars were first invented, they had very high carbon emissions. But we didn't cancel cars. We worked on them and we iterated on them and we improved upon them. Until now, we do have zero emissions cars. And we're moving towards a world where all cars are clean. The same will be done for crypto. And there are already solutions being made to move towards a greener NFT climate. And if you are more environmentally conscious, 
consider using Solana or Polygon instead of Ethereum for your own NFT project. For more information about which blockchain is right for you and your project, consider watching one of these comparison videos. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you can, and I will see you in the next video.